All right, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm going to share my screen and we are going to get rocking and rolling. Let's see. Just make sure I have my workshop up and running. I. All right, here we go. You should be able to see my screen now. All right, here we go. Let's jump in. Thank you so much for joining us today. Today, we are talking a little bit about being behind on our mortgage payments, falling into hard times, and kind of trying to figure things out. And I'm here to tell you that it's never too late and um, there's time to get back on your feet. So I want to share with you today some tips and tricks to help you if it, this is something that is important to you or maybe you're going through it right now. Uh, my name is Olga St. Pierre. I am a, a, a licensed real estate agent with Keller Williams Real Estate. Just a little bit about us. We have been helping clients across United States and Canada for the last 14 years. Our true mission and passion is being your advocate and your consultant and helping you being a responsible and sustainable homeowner. We are here, and this is why we do a lot of these community workshops, is to help you understand what you see on social media, what you see in the news, and help you understand how it translates and pertains to you, directly to you right here in our community. We do have a complete move solution and help you coordinate from start to finish and make it a move. If that is something that maybe you are anticipating and thinking about, and if not, that is great too. We are here beside you every day with our concierge service. Think of that as your yellow pages from start to finish. If you need contractor recommendations, if you need attorney recommendations, we're getting into the tax season, which means that you might need help with getting your taxes done. We are here to help you. So however, whatever help you might need, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. We are happy to connect you with someone who can help you at absolutely free of charge. So let's jump in and talk about it. So what we're going to talk about is just in general, what is a foreclosure? What does it mean if you are not being able to make some mortgage payments? What does that translate to you? We're going to give you a general overview of a foreclosure process and it does vary state by state. So we'll go through a couple of the timelines today that pertain to New Jersey and Pennsylvania. We're going to talk about your options, things to be aware of and in my recommendations on what's next. If you are in this process, if you have fallen behind on, on your payments, what does that mean and how can you back get back on track? And what I can tell you is that you absolutely can get back on track. We'll talk about some uh, good options today as well. So terms to be aware of, if you are in the situation, you're going to be seeing some of these things kind of floating around. 
you will be hearing some of these terms if you're getting mail or phone calls. So foreclosure is really a situation which a homeowner finds himself or herself and where he's unable to make mortgage payments as required every month, which means that even you're not able to make payments after the 15th of the month where you have that um, time frame that is leeway for you. And what that means is that when you stop making payments, the lender is authorized to uh, start a legal process against you. Act 91, it is a notice to take action to save your home from the foreclosure that is sent to you as an FYI for your information before a lender has to file certain legal documents in the county courthouse. And that usually takes place at least 60 days behind when you haven't made your mortgage payment for two months. Short sale is the ability to sell your home for less than what you owe on your mortgage. It is one of the strategies that we talk about if you are not able to stay in your home. We talk about and discuss to see if this is an actual option for you. Deed in lieu of foreclosure is a voluntary transfer of the property ownership to the bank, where you have tried everything that you can to get back on track. Maybe you are struggling with employment or maybe you're having health issues and owning this home is just no longer an option. So, but one thing that I just want you to be aware of is that there are lots and lots of options and that's why I appreciate all of you being on today to seek answers to seek information to get educated to figure things out if maybe you're doing this for yourself or maybe you're doing it for someone that is in need so general foreclosure process this is very much different it also depends on the bank it depends on the state that you're in but I wanted to kind of give you some guidelines just so you have a perspective on what does that look like. So typically, nothing happens in the first 60 to 90 days because the lender is just trying to figure things out and they're trying to reach out to you and see what happened, what are some of your struggles. First through third mortgage payment is not being paid. Day 63 is when you're getting your notices sent out to you, Act 63 and Act of 91, where the lender specifies to you that they are required legally to start a foreclosure process, filing paperwork, getting communication out to you, letting you know what they are required to do. Day 96 is when notices are expiring in 30 days if the borrower fails to communicate with the lender. That's when the lender is contacting a foreclosure attorney to help them with the process with the county and the state. What I can tell you is that one of the most important things that you can do to be your own advocate and to help yourself in this process, if that's where you are, is to call your mortgage company and explain the situation to them. Most of them are and would rather work things out with you and come up with a good plan, whether it's an extension, whether it's some kind of payment plan, rather go through a foreclosure process because it's extremely expensive. And that's, you know, the, the lender is not in the business of owning houses. They're in the business of lending people money so they can have a house of their own. Day 125, the foreclosure attorney files paperwork with the county and the borrower is notified. This is when the foreclosure process becomes public. You have to remember that when things are filed with the county, it is a public process, which means that everyone, if they know how to look and where to look, is going to know that you are in trouble. And this is where you are going to receive a flood of mail phone calls, visits, emails, and everything. This is when you are going to get information that says, I can save you. You don't have to pay anything. I will help you make it all go away. And if, unfortunately, there's a lot of scams that are going on. At the same time, there's legitimate, of course, companies that are out there. But it is like a floodgate opens up because everybody now knows what your situation is. Day 172. Sheriff's office schedules a chair sale date if things go literally according to the schedule. Day 200 notice of share sale is sent to the borrower. And what that means is there is an actual notice that gets attached to your front door. that There's going to be a share of sale that is scheduled. Day 230 share of sale actually takes place. If a third party does not purchase the home, the deed goes back to the lender and your bank becomes the owner of your home and you can still be in the house. Day 232, that's when the official eviction process starts if the borrower is still in the home, which means that the lender can send out a letter to you. They may offer you some funds to help you move out or find out how they can help you overall. Day 263 to 325, this is an eviction in process where there's a move out date notice. There could be forcible removal and move out. However, the lender does give plenty of time 
for things to be done peacefully and civilly. And if it doesn't, then that's when forcible of removal does happen by the sheriff's department. So let's talk about just some best practices and things that you can do. The absolute worst thing to do is actually do nothing. If you think that if you will throw away the letters from the mortgage company, if you don't respond to their phone calls, you don't respond to their emails, all of that is just going to go away? Unfortunately, no. Ignoring the communications and the lenders and the mortgage companies' attempts to help you, to reach out to you, and to find out what's happening, all this is going to do is just make things worse. Your concerns are not going to disappear. They're only going to get better and worse. So the longer the time passes, the worse things are going to get, the deeper you're going to get into it. So my suggestion to you, as much as it might be embarrassing and frustrating and make you anxious because things do happen to good people, people do fall in hard times, my recommendation to you is talk to your lender. That should be your first step. And get educated and find out what their process is for people that, that happen to have a loss of job or they have health issues. Believe me, you're not the first person and you're not the last person to see, see this happen to. Your options, let's talk about those things and best courses of action. Okay, So number one, stay ahead. If you foresee financial troubles, whether it may be furlough, losing a job, your hours are being cut, notify your lender immediately. Even if nothing is going to happen, if you're being proactive, any information that you provide to the lender is going to be added to your account. There's going to be a record of conversation and the phone call that you made. And this is going to show the lender that you are being serious and staying in communication and looking forward to help if it ever arises. Number two, when he's speaking with your lender, definitely inquire about the options. What are the, the pr procedure that your lender has if there's issues that may arise? Okay, tell your lender that you definitely want to work through this with them and you need their help. Find out what are some of the options. If mortgage modification is an option where they can reduce your principal, they can maybe lower your monthly payments for a period of time, maybe they can change your interest rate, maybe there's option to refinance to a lower rate, maybe extend a number of years so that way your monthly payment goes down. There's lots and lots of options out there. You just need to know which options your lender is providing to you. If staying in your home is not an option, then a couple of other things that we can talk about. Is there an option to sell your home so you can buy another one that is less expensive? Or maybe you can just sell and move on and just become a renter. This way you don't have to worry about anything. Now, the option that we already mentioned earlier is short selling to sell your home if there is no equity. If you don't have any equity, short sale is a good option. It actually provide you the least amount of damage to your credit report and your credit history. And another option is deed in lieu of foreclosure, where you voluntarily transfer the property to the mortgage company and tell them, I'm sorry, I just can't not make it work. So these are all great options and it all depends on your lender and it also all depends on your situation. What makes sense the most for you to help you out of the situation with the least amount of frustration and anxiety? The next part is to evaluate your financial situation. You are going to need to sit down and have a really, really big reality check with yourself. You're going to look, take a look at your current and future income, your current and future expenses. You're going to take a look and see if there's a need for changing your spending habits where you can cut down on un unnecessary expenses. You can read your bills for the last few months and think about the things that you absolutely have to pay for. This is your your necessary expenses versus the things that you want to have, right? Like having Starbucks coffee or maybe having a Netflix subscription. These are the things that you can go get by without until you get back on your feet. Next step is for you to create a budget and plan of action based on what your current income is and what your necessary debt is. The necessary things that you absolutely have to have is a roof over your head, you need to eat, you need to pay for your utility so that we, you are staying warm. You have a cell phone bill and that's it. Those are the most important things. Everything else can kind of be put aside for a period, for a small period of time. Late payments and behind on your mortgage severely will affect your credit and your financial health. 
And I think this is one of the biggest things people don't realize is that if you don't just don't, if you don't do anything, if you don't make the mortgage payment, your credit will be affected for quite a few years ahead of time. If you decide to go through for with an actual foreclosure and decide at some point down the road where things do get better and you get back on your feet, you may have to wait between three or seven or 10 years before you are eligible to buy a house. Again, depending on your circumstances. So that's why I always suggest let's let's find let's find out a way out now. Let's figure out things now before it gets too bad or there is no point of return. Next option is could you potentially pick up some extra income? Can you maybe deliver groceries? Can you do Uber or Lyft? Can you work for Amazon? There are lots of jobs that are out there, lots of people that are hiring. Maybe you can work part-time in the restaurant. Maybe you can do some serving. Think of those as options to get some extra income going. And another option is, do you have friends or family that you can possibly borrow funds from until you get back on your feet and then you can pay them back? Now let's talk about foreclosure scams. As I mentioned to you, at some point in this process, if you keep going and you're not able to figure things out, the filing in the county courthouse is going to make your situation public. And I totally get it. It is frustrating. It making you even more stressed out and anxious. And now everybody knows about it and they're going to be reaching out to you and offering you the sky and the moon and unicorns and everything else. I want you to be extremely vig vigilant because there are more scams out there than actually legal and, and helpful people and companies. Very Be wary of the advertising. You will hear things on radio and TV and social media. You're going to get flyers. You're going to get phone calls and mail solicitations. If anybody's telling you they're going to work for free, that's a scam. If anybody's going to want a few thousand dollars up front and that they're going to say they're going to make it all go away, if it sounds too good to be true, it most likely is. Attorneys promising to help easy out guarantees don't. Not attorneys are created equal. Not all attorneys work for their clients. People who are going to advise you to stop paying your mortgage or not talk to your mortgage company, please don't listen to those people because they are not trying to help you at all. And also, if you get any kind of papers that get sent to you that kind of look legit, but they're not, be sure you don't sign anything before double checking and triple checking to see if they're truly legal documents that are there to help you with your situation. And how do we get help? Number one, do not make any rash decisions. Number one is reach out to your mortgage company. Next, if you feel hopeless if you are frustrated maybe you're not getting the results that you are looking for you can always check out the uh, free personalized service from the government it's a counseling agency it is done through the u.s department of housing and urban development which means you know that it's legitimate you can find more information on their website or you can call them it's it's an a, a toll-free number next is seeking recommendations from your reputable and local resources. Please stay local because local knows the situation. They know the property. They know you. They know the area. And they may know the contact in the bank as well. Your realtor, your county resources, a good foreclosure attorney that can help you kind of get your ducks in a row and figure out the best course of action. And then meet for private consultations to discuss your options. A lot of people offer free consultations where they talk about your options, where you can write down notes, you can jot things down, you can ask questions, and then you can tell them, I am going to think about everything. And then I will let you know what I think is the best course of action for me. So don't make any spur of the moment decisions. Don't get roped into signing paperwork because you are there at the meeting and they're going to tell you, well, this offer is only good for while you're here. Please don't, because when you're starting to get pressured to make decisions or spend money, it's probably not a good company to rely on to help you in your situation. So here's what's next. My recommendation to you is if you're interested in some other workshops that we do, we have workshops that we do on a regular basis. Our workshop schedule is live with Olga. We also have all of our workshops recorded and you can find them on the web on the channel called At Home with Olga. And then market and community updates are on our Penn Jersey Living website. 
And of course, I'm here to help you. I have extensive uh, knowledge and experience in working with foreclosures and, so and short sales since 2008, when the market was completely in the dump. Uh, and I've held count I have helped countless um, homeowners get things straightened out and figuring things out and see what the best course of action is. You are welcome to reach out to me for a free private phone call. Absolutely no obligation Zoom consultation where we can discuss what your concerns are. And then if there's something I can help you, I definitely will. If I can't help you, I will definitely point you in the right direction because we do have contacts and the resources to help you discuss and figure out what is next for you. So that's what I wanted to share with you today. Um, everyone that signed up for this workshop is going to get a copy of the workbook as well as the recording of this workshop. And while we are on here, please let me know if you have any questions that you feel comfortable asking now, or you're welcome to also type them in the chat. All right, thank you, Alicia. And Thelma, if you want to type in your email address in the chat box so I can get you a copy of this workbook as well as the recording, that would be great. Okay. All right, perfect. Thank you, Alicia. I'll get the information out to you. And then Thelma, I have that as well. All right, perfect. Well, everybody, thank you so much. I have all the contact information, so I will get you a copy of this workbook as well as the recording. I hope that you enjoyed this workshop and you found this information helpful. We are here to help you with any of your needs that pertain to home ownership, to buying a home or selling a home, or our community as well. And we look forward to seeing you again soon on another one of our workshops. Thank you so much for joining and you have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye, everybody.